Welcome back. Now, let's continue with our pre scene for the June 2024 exams, the PBS company. Now, we are told that these doctors need to study at university for five years, take a demand exams. Now, let me take you through to our pre scene application notes with 147 pages. And let's move on to the pre scene applications I've done for you. It's a, if for our company on the exam day, that there might be a potential case that there might be a conflict between our doctor and the patient, which means the client or customer, if you like. So through investigation, we found out that the doctor did not take any exams or the job training and so on, and this would certainly affect our reputation. And of course, an exam question may say is that how would you solve it, okay, from the a strategic or holistic point of view. Of course, internal control will be absolutely key there and to making sure is that you check the background information of all the doctors before they uh, come into your business and so on. So, with regards to the veterinary education and training in real life, for example, this clinic in 2018 Having these doctors did not complete their required continuing education credit at all, so facing legal action. And other school is the training school uh, was criticised for the poor training program. Okay, so um, of course uh, the clinics are reluctant to recruit students from this school any longer. And, of course, another real-life company is called the Pet Care. Uh, because they are not providing sufficient on-the-job training, so this is why it brings us to the talent management. In this case, we need to ensure that on-the-job training will be absolutely important there, okay, especially for the technical part rather than simply focusing on the leadership parts when we are providing the on-the-job training okay, to these doctors. Now, in the pre that we are also told about the services that the PBS company provides. So, for example, this includes vaccinations and to check the health conditions and the medical treatment, if we found that the pet has got a disease, for example, it's the heart disease, or injured, okay, so from the uh, urgent or uh, unexpected accident, for example, the uh, flood of fire and so on. And also prescription of medication. And of course, the prescription of medication nowadays may be done on a remote basis. So therefore, we need to be watching out the potential competition that we may need to face. And also, selling prescription and non-prescription medication. Of course, for a prescription medication, that would be a lot more complicated. It will be subject to be regulated in most circumstances, and please do watch out. And this will be a source of regulatory risk. And also routine surgical operations and serious medical issues. So this means that if it is not suited to have routine surgical operations, we need to refer to other clinics. So related to the complex one, or the specialist one. Now, in my application, I've done this for you. So, for example, the serious one, so such as the cancer and so on, so related to the complex surgery, for example, the repairing broken bones, and also specialist services, for example, uh, the treatment of hair conditions, skin conditions, and eye care, okay, so regarding those pets. And also, given guidance to pet care and selling food 
And other products, for example, the accessories, okay, so for example, bedding, cages, toys for pet. And what I would do is that it's likely that we need to work with a supplier, and it's likely the supplier may be involving in the ethical issue on the exam day. So, for example, the supplier accepts our bribery, so we work with our supplier and allowing the suppliers to provide these accessories on our behalf and to us. And, of course, we should consider the ethical implications of how we do about it later on. We are also told that the service is provided via consultations. Okay, so consultations like in other type of businesses is like marketing, okay. Uh, so we need to consult with a doctor. A doctor is called veterinarian, and then having the operations, for example, having the treatment with the nurses and the doctors, uh, so we can cure the pet. And consultations are booked on the telephone or online. So this means that you need to make sure that you've got a website that functions well. You need to make sure that you've got the information system that functions well. You need to make sure that you can protect the data of your client. Okay, so that's important there. In our countries, the average time to consult is 15 minutes. Now, this would be one of the KPIs that is given by the examining team. And of course, in my application here, I've done several KPIs for you. Now, we are told in this pre scene the average consultation duration is like taking a total con uh, consultation time and divide this into a number of consultations. And for example, the total consultation time, so let's say, 150 minutes, let's say, that we've got 10 consultations. So this means that it's on average 50 minutes per consultation here. So we are given that only. However, how about the client's waiting times, the patient's waiting time, and how about the utilization rate regarding a consultation? That's important. Now, if you ever went to the hospital before, you will see the time slots there. So for example, the slot 1 from 9am to 9.15 to 9.30 would be another slot. Okay, now what we need to do is to say that, right, so these doctors, we are paying them fixed cost because they will get a fixed salary. And they're sitting there, so if they do nothing, and that will be at idle time. So idle time, yes, we are talking about something like the uh, utilization rate. So what we're trying to do here is to say, right, okay, so in the day, let's say that we've got 28 available slots. However, only dealing with 24 client or patient, uh, so which means the consultation done 24 there. So the utilization rate is around about 85.7%. So this means that the idle time would be around about 14.3% there. Okay, so uh, I would use these sort of KPIs and some measured performance of companies in this industry. Now, in addition to that, we're also told about our revenue. Not only we include the service fee, so for example, it's the consultation, we to charge the patient money, diagnosis and treatment, and even more seriously, the surgical procedures, we should charge the money. But at the same time, we can also sell products to others. And this is why we have got the inventory days here. Of course, the inventory not only includes this, but also includes the, um, the materials that we need to use in our surgical procedures, so for example, the gloves and so on. And of course, when we are charging a price, we'll need to firstly determine our costs and then we will plot a markup on that. So the markup is the profit, okay, so another revenue stream that we will get, I mean, as a profit there. The final one 
is the referral fee. The previous company may be referring the client or patient to another clinic to do the specialty services, for example, the eye care and so on. And of course, the previous company will get a commission, okay? i.e. is the referral fee. Okay, now, whether or not we should disclose the referral fee, certainly and that would be an ethical issue that we need to consider. So make sure that you disclose to the client in a transparent manner anyway. Now, with regards to consultations, there might be certain problems in there. So for example, not available number of doctors and the quality is not consistent and time management, I mean, it will be quite different depending on uh, what sort of pets that you have, whether or not it will be in a larger size or uh, more serious condition and so on. Now, let's move on about the market structure right now. Now, we're told traditionally the vet organizations are quite small and one or two clinics will be a niche of a business there and growth was through organic way. So which means we build our own clinic and to employ people and get a license on our own. However, the number of pets in this country has actually increased and the size of the businesses actually grew. Therefore, the mergers and acquisitions, the small businesses acquired by the larger one occurs because of the economies of scale. Now, what do I mean by economies of scale for this? It's like the synergy because one plus one equals to five because by combining these two businesses all together, we'll get another three dollars worth of profit there. Now, the cost savings will come from in this industry. Firstly, you can buy the medical supplies, the sort of inventory in your uh, surgical procedures and something like that. So the medications, vaccines, or the surgical supplies, so for example, the gloves and so on. So you can enjoy the bulk discount. It's the first type of cost saving there. The second type is that you can centralize your admin regarding putting the accounting HR and IT at your head office. So you don't really need the duplicated department any longer to save you lots of salaries, for example. You can also consolidate the marketing effort. So for example, if you're introducing the new service, for example, is the insurance service that you provide to a client. Okay, so all the clinics in your company would need to follow that principle, would need to follow that uh, marketing way. So for example, is the, uh, the advertisement campaigns, the digital marketing, and the community outreach, that's important because you may be providing the workshops to the potential patient so that they know the importance of going into your uh, clinics or school visit uh, and, and to make sure that students are aware of this. Uh, or even that you assign your staff to provide the volunteer support in the community to cheat the pet carefully. Okay, now, so these are the potential cost savings that may be coming from, and this is why this will be the reason for the merged and acquisitions. Now, what do I mean by economics of scale? We are particularly talking about the fixed costs. So you know what I mean, the fixed costs is like the fixed salaries, the fixed rental expenses, and so on. If I can increase the number of products that we can produce or and to sell so that the fixed costs per unit will reduce and this is what I mean by the economies of scale. Now the number of products in this particular industry is the number of clients that we have, the number of surgical procedures that we've done for the clients and so on. So this is why M&A will be quite quick Okay, especially if you can't obtain license, 
in this industry, why not to buy a complete existing company in this industry? Now, it is anticipated that the acquisition activity will continue over the next five years. So this means that for our business, it's not a public listed company at all, we may be buying other companies. Alternatively, we may be bought by others. So make sure that you're ready for that. However, in the pre scenes that we are told is that our company is the fifth largest company in this industry, and that's quite good. That so it's highly likely that we may be considering buying other businesses, or at least set up the joint venture agreement with other businesses on the exam day. So this means that the diversification strategy, according to the ounce of growth vector matrix, we may need to consider this time. Now, we're also told that more recently, multinational businesses, uh, so for example, the pet food divisions, have been attracted by the industry's profit, has been acquiring uh, rate businesses. Okay. Now, the pet food companies buying our company potentially, and are the attractions of the industry is that it provides another route to the market that pet food products can be sold by our clinics. And these multinational businesses are expected to continue their expansion through acquisition activities. Okay, now, so what we're trying to do there, firstly, they buy our company because of a synergy, which, which means the one plus one equals to five. And with the pet food companies, firstly, if we reject the offers that are being bought by them, but rather, we'd like to set up the joint venture agreement, so which means we come together with the contract so that the profit can be shared on a pre-agreed ratio among these parties. Now, what sort of things do we need to consider when you're setting up the joint venture? From your study test, you may have learned, firstly, the joint venture agreement, which means we're doing something together. It needs to be align with our strategy okay so for example we are focusing on pets but now you want me to expand into a new business for example it's the mining business i would say no perhaps at the same time whether or not it will bring operational benefit to our business for example is the cost promotion opportunities to increase our sales because for example if i were to partner with the pet food company, of course the clients buying the pet food, if their clients has problems in their pet, of course, they will come to our clinics because they saw our advertisements already. At the same time, we need to make sure that the financial structure, which means the money that we input into the joint venture business and how we manage that business. For example, who would be the executive directors and uh, who would be coming to the business and, and to having meetings and so on and any conflict report to whom. So these sort of things need to be agreed in advance. Now, potentially, we may be acquiring the pet food company or perhaps being acquired by a pet food company. Now, what we are saying is this. In your SBO exam, there's a very small point in the syllabus is called international value networks. Now, what do I mean by IVN is this? If you were to buy the pet food company produce their pet food, so you will need to consider your cost advantages and how you would locate your business to make sure that you can utilize the local capabilities. At the same time, you need to overcome the tariff to save taxes, for example. Now, an example of a cost advantage would be to locate your business in countries with lower labor costs. For example, in China, uh, for example, in Cambodia, uh, any sort of countries, for example, you can think about that. However, of course, the biggest challenge for that, you will need to consider the cultural differences. Okay, so you need to understand that properly. At the same time, 
where do you position the R&D capability? So, for example, you may be positioning the research and development centre, not in those countries I mentioned before, but rather, for example, in the US or in the UK, by partnering with the universities in, in those countries, okay, uh, partnering with the renowned or very famous universities like that. At the same time, you may be thinking about, so where does your raw materials to be sold to other divisions in your same group? I would say that why not set your company in the EU so that you can avoid lots of import tariffs and you can also enjoy the low corporate income tax rate as a result of it. So by doing this, we are actually, yes, by another company, yeah, you may be facing with the SFA tests, which means the suitability, feasibility, acceptability from a strategic point of view to see whether or not that company is worth to be bought by others. However, more importantly, is that you will need to consider the international value network. Value means profit. So by operating your business, for example, globally, on a network basis, and it will drive up value to the business. So, so make sure so you consider the cost advantages, local capabilities, overcoming tariffs. And of course, you can consider all sorts of risks related to the global supply chain will be very complicated, the government may step in, and so on and so forth. You can say those. But I would say that this point has never come up. Okay, so make sure this time, focus on this. Very, very important though. That's a small point though. Right there, I'm going to be stopping the recording now uh, for the demo section for our section two regarding the June 2024 SBL pre scene And I look forward to seeing you soon in my course. Let me help with your SBL exam success. Best of luck. APC, accounting for your future.